Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Dream Daddy. Last time, we went on a date with Brian, and we beat him at mini golf. Now to destroy him at something else he loves. Fishing. Alright, to be honest with you guys, I've never been fishing in my life. Except on, like, maybe, like, Stardew Valley. But that doesn't count. Hey, Daisy and I are going fishing tomorrow. Are you in or out? Oh no, I've been dreading this day. I accidentally boasted about my abilities as a fisherman to Brian. Now he's challenging me to another dad off. I've been doing my research online, but I'm nowhere close to being an expert. Still, though, I have to accept. Type back to Brian. Sounds great, man. Super excited to catch all those fish. And my lawn could use another good mowing. <laughs> That'll show him. Brian responds back, letting me know that tomorrow he'll pick us up at an hour I had previously forgotten existed, also known as 4am. That's going to be a rough start. Amanda. Amanda comes into the room for them in the kitchen, eating a cheese stick, biting off a piece like it's some... <laughs> biting off piece by piece like some kind of monster. I didn't raise you like that. What? It's called string cheese, not choppy cheese. For a reason, Amanda. Did you just call me and besides my controversial string cheese eating method, or what? No, Amanda. We have fishing tomorrow. Well, you'll, you have to go fishing. I get to play with Brian's dog. How do I become a master of fishing overnight? You went fishing in the Girl Scouts, didn't you? Nope. My stint in the Girl Scouts was brief and purely transactional. I thought I could get free cookies, but I didn't know I, that I had to be like outside and stuff and tie knots do I look like someone who's trying to get married because I'm not tying the knots but I have to beat Brian also good joke Amanda dad let me tell you a story do you remember last summer how I applied for a job at that coffee shop across town uh give me a refresher during the interview they asked me if I knew how to work an espresso machine that I, and I really wanted the job so I lied and said yes on the first morning there was a line out the door and within half an hour I severely burned my hand and they told me to go home and never come back I still have a scar from that oh of course I remember what's that have to do with fishing the burn is a metaphor dad I don't get it you can lead a horse to water what do horses have to do with fish and burns Dad, please, I don't get your obsession with competing against Brian. You wouldn't understand it's a dad thing. Please try explaining it to me. Okay, Brian's just... He thinks he's so much better than me and purposely reminds me of that every, whenever he can. It's like he has to one-up me. I have to beat him at, this own, at his own game. Hey, just because Brian's like a general contractor doesn't mean that he's better than whatever job I have. I'm not sure what it is. Is that what you think's happening here? No, Amanda. Okay, good. I know that's what's happening. Alright, Pops. We should both be getting some sleep. See you in the morning, okay? Night, Panda. I brush my teeth and throw on some pajamas. I climb into bed and set my alarm and close my eyes. Okay, sleep. I'm wide awake. Can't help thinking about the last time I went fishing, hoping that there was something I could glean from it to give me an edge over Brian. I was about nine years old. My dad woke me up one morning and told me to get dressed and meet him outside. Still dark outside, I had no idea what's going on, but before I knew, it, we were both alone on a freezing cold lake. I had to sit there for hours. It got hot and muggy, the air thick with bugs. I picked up the mosquito bites while my dad sat in stony silence. Fishing pole in one hand and a beer in the other. We didn't catch anything. On the drive home, my father brought me a, bought me a pack of cigarettes and didn't say a word. That didn't help, and I think I have some repressed sadness about my father I'll deal with that later oh. the way that the like art makes it look it makes it look like the water's actually ice I'm, st I'm sitting on a 
boat in the middle of the water. I can't see any land, but I know it's a lake. The water is placid still. I'm holding nothing but a fishing pole. I don't know why, but it feels like my life depends on catching fish, fish right now. I cast my lure into the water and wait. And wait. And wait. My whole being is filled with hopelessness as I watch the line disappear into the depths below. You used the wrong lure. I look up to see my father. He's a ghost now. Just as he looked. That one cold morning, disapproving. I'm panicking now. I lure up and I try to grab a different one. But all my lures in the ta my tackle box are the exact same. I look up to my father for guidance, but he's gone. Damn ghost. I try casting again, but I can't hold my footing. The boat tips over and I fall into the water, sinking further and further and further. And I'm drowning, drowning in water. One fish swims up to me as Brian's eyes. You gotta use neutral buoyancy lure if you're trying to catch a trout, buddy. Ah. Uh, it's fishing day. That was a weird dream. Alright, let's get going, guys. Amanda. Come on. Wake up, Amanda. We've gotta go find my... We've gotta go find my... We've gotta go find a fish. Mm, no. Well, you gotta get up. I can't do this without you. Also, stop sleeping in your clothes. Amanda pulls her comfort over her head. Never. Amanda, get up. I'll get up in a minute. Alright, Brian should be here in 20. So you b just better not go back to sleep. Amanda sticks her hand through the bait blanket to wave me away. I leave her room. Make some coffee and another cup with lots of cream and sugar for Amanda. I see me and Amanda take our coffee the same way. Whenever she gets up, Amanda eventually wanders in, chugs her coffee while I do word jumbles. I hear the doorbell ring. That must be Brian. Still rubbing our eyes, we walk outside to see Brian. He's tanked out in his exact same clothes. Daisy's falling asleep next to him. Early bird gets the worm, buddy. You ready to fish? I was born ready. My eyes narrow in on Brian. It's a good day to die. Hop on in, guys. Let's get this fishing party started. I walk over to the driver's side door and open it. Woof, woof. <gasps> That's a pretty cute dog. It's a corgi, it looks like. I just noticed... All the other characters other than my character blink. Brian's dog immediately hops into the driver's seat, tr wagging his tail furiously. Can I see your license, sir? <laughs> Maxwell, let daddy sit. Maxwell obediently hops into the back to cuddle with Daisy. Amanda sits in next to Maxwell and Daisy and immediately falls asleep. You ready for an adventure? I'm ready for glory. Sure, we'll stay awake as we drive to the outskirts of town. Country music plays quietly from the radio. So where exactly are we headed? About an hour north of here, a little spot I've been going to since I was a kid. My dad used to take me there all the time. I don't think anybody else knows about it. I brought everything we need to so that we can catch some trout, have a light, nice little fire, and enjoy the nature. Uh... My fishing pole is in the shop, getting tuned up. Uh, do you have, uh, maybe an extra one I could borrow? But of course. It's probably not as nice as... It sounds like yours is, though. Right. Digging a hole here. I stare out the force lining in the highway. The sun is barely over the horizon. For a split second, I spot a deer grazing. It goes back to the brush. For a nice quiet drive... We pull off the highway onto a dirt road and get to a nice lake. Magnificent, even. Well, here we are. Yep. Step out of the car and then... Brian unload our gear as Maxwell runs around us, barking. See, hear that bark in the background? That was a sound effect. Shut up. <laughs> the kids wake up and wander to the shore. Where Daddy, where Daisy, tries to reach Amanda teach Amanda how to skip rocks. Brian and I carry the tackle boxes and cool it to the edge of the lake where he has a canoe waiting. Uh, still one piece. 
Hold on. Help me out with Maxwell. I help put Brian place a tiny dog-sized life vest onto Maxwell. Woof woof. All right, your turn. Brian hands me a lime green life vest. Maybe if I fall in, you'll save me. If I fall in, I'm counting on you to rescue me. Suit yourself. Let's be honest. Amanda and Daisy aren't strong enough to do it. If my character is anything like me, he just weighs a lot. Um, Brian turns to Amanda and Daisy, who are skipping rocks. These two girls aren't going to be able to do it, especially like one that hasn't hit puberty. You kids want to fish? I'm good with just throwing rocks, rocks in the water. Amanda hurls rock into the pond with gusto. Yeah, take that water. Amanda, you're supposed to be skipping them. Is that what we're doing? Daisy, don't you want to fish? I think catching fish is kind of inhumane. But they're not humans. Duh. We're going to explore the woods and look at, at bugs and stuff. Alright, be safe. Don't go too far. Brian puts the little vest around himself and we all throw our equipment into the canoe. Maxwell happily jumps and takes his place on the boat. I get into the canoe and as Brian shoves off we paddle our way into the middle of the lake. Most freshwater fish usually feed at dusk and dawn, which is why I had to get up get you up so early. Yeah, I know. Pretty common fisherman knowledge after all. Fisherman knowledge that I'm knowledgeable about. Still gambling, man. You know it. Let's see who can catch more fish. You can catch more than one? Sounds pretty easy to me. What's on the line? Besides all the fish I'm going to catch, obviously. I was thinking of something a little bit more high stakes than mowing the lawn. Custody of our children? More than that, let's say, if I win, I get your weed whacker. The Whackmaster 2000? That's a limited edition. But if you win, you get my pole saw. The Reaching Cut 3000. The cordless version? That's the one. Shit. The Reaching Cut 3000 is a state of art. My weed whacker is a prized position, but there are those hard to reach branches at the back of my yard that have been begging for a pruning. You're on. We shake on it. Suddenly, remember, I don't know how to fish. My foolish fatherly pride will one day be my undoing. I watch as Brian ties a lure and takes some stuff that I can't quite follow with his fishing pole and casts into the lake. Oh boy. Now that I have to do that, I stare down at the tackle box and at the pole in my hand. Um, put some bait on the hook. A fish worm from the styrofoam container Brian bought it's slippery, but I think I'm going to get into the hook if I just focus. Oh god, I'm bleeding. Oh god, blood's everywhere. The worm is not on the hook. Need some help? No. I meant to do that. The blood attracts sharks. They can smell blood. That's... Nope, it's sharks. Sharks are fish. Don't try to... Tie a knot or something. Oh, fuck. I'm so good at this. Yep, just one it's not coming apart anytime soon. This not I will cast my heavenly line upon the unsuspecting water and deliver us onto a, a bountiful harvest. He doesn't seem to be paying much attention. Let's cast this circuit. Pull my clown rod and launch the lure as hard as I can. And the lure flies off the line and sets far, far away, landing in the lake with a sploosh. Sorry, I judge this wind speed wrong. Uh, the cold air drives the pressure down? <laughs> Go ahead and take my pull. I know it's hard to switch into a pull you're not used to. I'll fix up another lure. Oh, Brian's so nice. Sometimes. Alright. Do the fish grouping match three. Um, just get them all in a line. Alright. Yeah, match three. Got it. All right. Um, let's see here. Match three. Thank you. I do like it when it's the catch of the day. Um, so one of my many weaknesses, on top of uh, you know, just everything, 
is probably talking while doing match three games. Hence why I haven't played Honey Pop yet. Um, also because it's got a lot of uh, boobies in it. Can't show those on YouTube. Um, let's see here. Also, nice catch. Um, let's see here. Some of these, a lot of these are very similarly colored, which I'm pretty sure is intentional to really kind of just throw you off. Um, usually, if you're making a match three game, you try to make your fish look distinctive. Um, what else? Um, what? That's the bullhead catfish. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. Oh, this one works. Catch of the match of the day. Mm, this isn't as easy as it looks. I mean, it probably is, but it's just my eyes are kind of going cross-eyed. Um, do you know what the plural fish is? Nope. Hmm. I'm looking for another set right there. Nope. Oh, dang. Oh, wow, I got an S+. Plus. I wasn't expecting that. Good work. I thought I was doing really badly. Wow, this is way tougher than I thought. I took look over to Brian, who's smiling and obviously enjoying his time here on the lake. I will crush him. Suddenly, the fishing pole jumps in my hand. I reflexively tug upwards. I think I got something big. Tip of the bull pole goes down deep. I reel it back. It's a long, beautiful rainbow trout. It's all yours. Lean down in excitement and notice that my hands are shaking with excitement. This fish is bigger than all the ones Brian caught. That pulls all my the entire tip canoe the entire canoe tips over with me and I find myself sinking in the lake. Should have taken that line fest. All of a sudden, I'm gonna die. Wait, I didn't take the life fest? I thought like that one was the only thing that I was the only one that was gonna be like, hey, take this life fest. Don't mess around with fly fest kids, they're important. You alright? Doesn't that count as one? Seeing as all our fish are now swimming back in the lake, I guess so. Brian laughs. <laughs> Let's get you to shore. Brian and I flip the canoe back over and fill it with our now soaking wet gear. We row back to shore with Maxwell and Tell. Ooh. Sexy dad bod. That's, you know, that's real hot, everybody. Pretty much exactly like what I look like, except my arms aren't quite that big. Uh, my arms aren't that big. It's okay, though. Brian takes off his shirt. Dots of <laughs> water glisten off his strong back. Uh, he's built like an ox. Hope he doesn't notice me staring. Gonna get a fire so we can dry off. Wanna hand me yours? Oh, yeah. Take out my own shirt and toss it to Brian. I suddenly wish I had done more sit-ups in my life. Or any sit-ups at all, really. Another thing you've bested me in, stupid sexy Brian. Might as well fry that shirt up because it's the only lunch we'll have. The day's young. We can catch fish from the shore. Once Brian gets going, I sit on a f to the dry my pants. And Brian lures out by the water edge. We're probably going to have to put the kibosh on the competition for now. Until another day. My stomach growls. You hungry? Oh, I'm fine. Which is into his cargo shoulders and pulls out a few granola bars. I have a small child. I'm flushed with snacks. Brian joins me in by the fire and I accept the cargo short granola. And now we're waiting. What the girls get off to? Shouldn't they be back by now? How weird would it be if this, like, just turned into, like, a slasher movie and they got, like, murdered by Jason Voorhees? I wouldn't worry about it too much. They're a couple of smart kids. That's what I'm worried about. They're too smart. They've probably established a small rural government by this port and installed themselves as leaders. Take a look 
round at the sun cresting the tree line, casting the entire lake in a warm golden glow. The forest seems to be coming alive now. Birds chirp in the distance. Wow, nature's beautiful. A mosquito bites me. I slap my neck and curse it. Nature sucks. Here you go, bud. Hands me a bottle of bug spray and I begrudgingly take it and douse myself. I've always hated how this stuff smells. Really? I've always kind of liked it. Reminded me of being outside. Maybe you and I have different sentiments on the outdoors. Maxwell comes bounding up to me with a huge stick in mouth. He drops at my feet and looks expectantly. Um. Pff. No, throw the stick. Don't be mean to Maxwell. I hurl the stick as hard as I can towards the tree line. Maxwell bolts after it running as fast as his stubby little legs can carry him, which consequently is not very fast. It is very cute though to watch dumpy little dogs run around. Nice throw, Daddy. I turn away so he can't see me blush. Maxwell brings the stick back to me, clearly proud of himself. Good boy, Maxwell. You're a very good and speedy boy. You're the world champ of fetch. It's time for the pets. What's the plan? Oh. You gotta scratch behind the ears. I give him Maxwell some nice scratches behind his floppy ears. He responds in kind by licking my face. He really likes you. Be careful, he's gonna try to follow you home if you keep that up. I scratch Maxwell's ears more intensely. I'm gonna steal your dog, Brian. We both laugh. <laughs> but I'm not kidding. I'm gonna steal your dog. While I'm playing with Maxwell, fish begin to routinely pull on Brian's lines. I watch Brian effortlessly fillet the fish, squeezing a bit of lemon on them and frying up in a cast iron pan. Before we know it, we have a little feast fit for a couple of shirtless dudes, except I'm totally wearing my shirt still. Amanda and Daisy emerge from the woods, looking totally unscathed. Whoa, dad bod patrol. I'm gonna have to put <laughs> issue you both a citation and demand you put your shirts on. There are children present. Brian tosses me my now dry shirt, and I pull it over my head, thinking full that I will no longer be distracted by Brian and his pecs. Where have you guys been? Study entomology? The study of bugs, don't be ridiculous. I expected you guys to be covered more in mud and stuff. Daisy looks offended. What do you take me for? A child? Amanda puts a hand on Daisy's shoulder. Right. Take a seat around the fire and Brian nervously get, serves us all or <laughs> oops, not nervously. Brian serves us all some generous piles of fish on paper plates. It's absolutely delicious. Why does it gotta be so good at stuff though? Fish taste okay. Daisy and Amanda both nod furiously. Mounts full of fish. It's incredible. I've never had fish this good. Yeah, it's great. Old Harding family recipe. Why are your pants wet? Well, Amanda, we were out there on the lake and I accidentally tipped over that boat. Don't worry, all of the gear floated to the surface so we didn't lose anything. Right, Daddy? I, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Can't believe he just covered for me. Gosh, he even out humbles me. He's trying to beat me at everything, including the world famous sense of humility. We finish our fish and end up playing catch with Maxwell for a while before we decide to head out. After cleaning up the camp, we pack up the station wagon and let Maxwell into the back seat. The poor pup falls asleep in a cuddle puddle with Amanda and Daisy. They've had a long day. Been an ordeal today, but bud, let me drive you guys home. I want to prove to him that I'm the most awake dad on the block, but yeah, I'm beat. Fine. As we drive away, I take one last look at the lake disappearing behind us and smile. I rest the, my head against the window and the rumble of the dirt road beneath us it lulls us into a quiet sleep. Hey, sleepy head. I open my eyes and realize I had dozed off in the car. I self-consciously wipe a bit of drool off my chin. Oh, hey, I was, uh, Resting my eyes, uh, just in case we suddenly had to jump into any sort of combat flight, so I'm super way for it. I'm ready to fight with my stronger arms. 
It's all good. You earned some rest, buddy. Thanks for coming out with us today. I had a lot of fun with you. Thanks for inviting us. I also had a lot of fun, actually. Good to hear. Take it easy, yeah? You too. Take it the easiest. Brian chuckles to himself as he unloads the car. Amanda, I get inside and immediately collapse onto the couch. Long day. Yep. So close to that pole saw. Pole saw? Yeah, we were competing to see who could catch the most fish. Ugh, stop. Why do you care so much? Amanda Panda, just look at the guy. So I've obviously got my number and he's throwing my face in it. Dad, I love you. But you're kind of dumb sometimes. Dumb? Or clearly the superior dad. You know what? I don't have the energy required to properly unpack your weird fixation with asserting your masculinity. I'm going to bed. Night. Amanda slides off the couch and face down onto the floor. I'm a tired slug. Amanda, that floor is disgusting. I don't care. Well, night, honey. Night, pops. Alright. Well, I think this is when we get our grade. I like to know that I can make a dad blush. Thank you. And everyone, thank you for watching. Remember, don't tip your po boat over. Well, no wait. Remember everyone, wear your life vest, stay safe, and have fun. Wearing your life vest is the most important while you're on a like boat. Uh, come on, who do you think you are? Better than the dog?